Okay, good afternoon. The Planning Commission is uh, now in session. Before we start today's meeting, I want to take a moment to honor a friend and uh, colleague, Bruce Bartlett. Bruce uh, passed away last week. He was a uh, member of the Planning Commission for eight years. Before that, the ABR. He was dedicated to making his city, Santa Barbara, a better place. And we're all better for having known and worked with him. So uh, just a moment of silence for Bruce Bartlett. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Rodriguez, will you uh, call the roll, please? Commissioner Here. Commissioner Peugeot? Here. Commissioner Lodge? Here. Commissioner Jordan? Here. Commissioner Higgins? Absent. Vice Chair Campanella? Here. Chair Thompson? Here. <clears throat> do we have any uh, changes to the agenda? We do not. Any announcements? No announcements. No announcements. Okay, the next item is the review of uh, minutes for July 16th. Do we have any corrections or changes? If none, can we have a motion to approve? Mr. Chair, yes. I just want to acknowledge, and now Ms. Rodriguez is aware of this, that there was a misspelling um, of my name. She has the page, a uh, small item, but she's already noted it, and we have it corrected. Thank you. It's a bad, bad thing that we get our names misspelled. Huh? <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Any other changes? Can we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? One okay. abstention, Mr. Chair. I was absent. Okay. And uh, minutes and a resolution uh, for the July 23rd meeting. Any changes, corrections? If none, can we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Those are approved. I'll be, uh, I'm, I'm abstaining. I was not present. Okay. Uh, also, uh, Chair, I'm abstaining as well. I was not here. Two abstentions. Okay. On to the uh, next item, which is a discussion about substantial conformance for the Cancer Center project on Pueblo Street. Ms. Galarte, are you going to give the report? Ms. Kennedy will be giving the report. Okay. Ms. Kennedy? Thank you, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. Today's item is the Cancer Center of Santa Barbara Substantial Conformance Determination Discussion. The purpose of the hearing today is to describe the changes to the project and to request input from the Planning Commission and from the public. No action will be taken, and the final determination on the substantial conformance determination will be made by the Community Development Director. This is a summary of the substantial conformance determination request by the applicant. And the question is, are the changes in substantial conformance with the Planning Commission approval? And there are three changes. At 520, and I'll go over these in more detail, but this is a summary of the request. 
at 525 West Hennep Row, the change from commercial back to residential duplex. At 529 West Hennep Row, a change from the residential duplex to commercial use. And then the commercial use change from office space to a learning center, including an auditorium. Here is the PC approved site plan. I'd like to point out the main features of the project. This was approved back in June of 2010. This is the main cancer center facility. Uh, this is along West Pueblo Street here and Junipo Street above. So the main facility here, driveway entrance, entrance to a four-tier parking structure. Along Junipero is a, an existing commercial building, a proposed residential duplex. A, this was a conversion to a commercial use a residential duplex here and a residential duplex here. The project received development plan approval by the Planning Commission and also community priority designation by the City Council. Here is a slide of the approved landscape. So the area that we're talking about today is on along Hanipro. Again, this is the residential duplex that was approved and the conversion to a commercial structure here. This is the approved design that you looked at back in 2010 along Hanipro Street. Here is the building which was used by the Breast Cancer Resource Center at the time. And although it had never been converted to a commercial use, um, as part of this approval, it was converted, or the approval to be converted. And then here would, is a elevation of the approved residential duplex. This is the new proposed site plan along Hanipero. Right here is the proposed learning center. And next to that is the proposed residential duplex. So the proposal includes, instead of converting this residential two-story building to commercial use, the applicant will probably discuss this a little bit more, but it, it turned out to be too difficult and costly to do that. So what they've decided, they would like to convert this to a residential duplex. And then this area here, which was vacant, instead of constructing a du one-story duplex, they determined that a learning center would be uh, something that the cancer center could use in their complex. So they're proposing a one-story learning center that includes an auditorium with 110 seats, an audiovisual room, a small conference room, uh, restrooms, and a lobby. Here is the proposed design. So this area is that existing building that would be uh, converted back to residential use. So it will be a two-story duplex. And here is the learning center proposal in the currently vacant area of the site. Here's a floor plan of the proposed learning center. Down here is part of the already approved parking lot. And this would be Hinnipero above here. And then the driveway coming in off Hinnipero. In regard to parking, the original project was approved with 170, excuse me, 167 spaces. The project came back for an SCD approval to increase the number of spaces in the four-tier parking structure. So they were approved to have 180 spaces. They were able to get more spaces in that structure than originally um, designed. And the current requirement is 179, so there's no increase in, uh, they don't need any more spaces than they have currently. There's a question at the site visit in regard to Cottage Hospital, whether, um, it's full and how often and such, so uh, the applicant was able to find out for me that the structure is usually full on Wednesdays and Thursdays, approximately eight to two, that time period during the week, and that that coincides with the street sweeping in that area, so that appears to be the, the result of that. So um, other times there are numerous parking spaces available. Some additional information in regard to this project. It did go to ABR, received positive comments. 
um, in regard to the substantial conformance request in general and also the new design of the Learning Center. There will be no increase in non-residential square footage. The same number of residential units is proposed. That would be six, so three duplexes. And the Learning Center, which includes the auditorium, is to be an ancillary use to the Cancer Center for medical use only. Status of the overall Cancer Center project is that demolition permits have been issued. There are still some ABR review required for some final details to the main building, um, final details to the parking structure, and those Hanipuro Street buildings have not received their final review yet. Plans are in building department for plan check currently, um, and that's an ongoing process that we've been um, working through the details of the project. You've received a letter from one of the neighbors who owns property uh, on West Pueblo Street. It's in regard to drainage. We talked about this at the site visit. Uh, this is not part of the SCD discussion before you today. Uh, it's my understanding that the resolution between the Cancer Center and the neighbor is pending, that they have been working on this, and I expect that at some point a uh, resolution to be um, reached. Uh, if there are changes to the pl approved plans, they will be reviewed by ABR and they will require Building Safety Division plan checks to um, make sure everything is up to code and meets our requirements. Again, this is a summary of the SCD request. The question is, are the changes in substantial conformance with the Planning Commission approval? And they include 525 West Hennepero, the change from commercial back to residential duplex, at 529 West Hennepero Street, the change from a residential duplex to commercial use, and then the commercial use change from an office space to the Learning Center Auditorium. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Do we have a presentation from the applicant? Mr. Chair, members of the commission, we do, although I'll try to be brief because Kathy has done an excellent job, I think, giving you the overview. Um, this, as a reminder, is actually uh, the view of the Cancer Center from Pueblo. So on your right there is that driveway uh, going up to the main entrance. Um, Kathy's shown you the approved site plan already. This, of course, is the area that is in question. And... Um, I think that she did a good job um, explaining the background. This is the site today. And then next door is uh, 525, the Victorian, where Breast Cancer Resource Center um, has been located for many years. That's that building. So when we got into this, we realized that uh, to convert that building to a medical uh, office building, it would be significant from a building code standpoint. So you all approved the change of use to commercial, but um, the problem comes in meeting the building code, especially as a two-story medical building. We'd have to install an elevator. We would have to have completely redone the foundation. At the end of the day, we would have rebuilt this building. And so uh, we said, gee, why don't we keep that residential, convert it back to what it was originally, and put the two units there, and then look at uh, medical, basically taking that exact square footage, which I think is 2,445 square feet, which is what the Breast Cancer Resource Center of Victorian was, and put it on this site. And then subsequent discussions with Sansom and Cancer Center um, re really uh, exposed the need for this notion of a learning center rather than just creating a generic medical office building. So Kathy showed you this, but basically it is 210 um, seats that would be uh, configured as you see. This uh, Hunipero is along the top. My pointer isn't working, so. Uh, Hunipero is along the top, so there's an entrance, there's toilets, uh, there's kind of a breakout conference room, and that's pretty much what the building um, is. And as I mentioned at the site visit, I think our intent with this building is, even though it is a specialized use to uh, design it from a structural uh, mechanical standpoint, that in the future it could become a medical office building or whatever it may need to be if, the, if this need ever went away. Um, that's obviously an important sustainability concept for all buildings we do, that they have a long um, life. So that's, this is just a little perspective sketch of what that proposed building is. Here's the view from Oak Park, um, looking back to the east. 
This is what was approved, uh, two-story duplex in this location, and then this is how it looks uh, with the proposed building, which is one story. The view looking back in sort of uh, the other direction, more to the, to the southwest. Um, here's the, the uh, planned uh, duplexes. The, the third building there uh, from the left is 525, that Victorian. And then the approved originally approved duplex, two-story duplex, and then the new proposed uh, learning center. And this is the street elevation of the two, which Kathy has already showed you. Um, from a landscape perspective, it is uh, probably the most significant uh, change is that we obviously had space behind the two-story duplex and had a couple of um, trees planted in that area. I think there was a, an, I think it was an elm and a pecan that were proposed in this original landscape plan. So obviously going to one story increases that footprint. So this is what the proposed uh, landscape plan is. And um, I'll have to check um, on the landscape plans, but it's a different kind of tree that we have proposed along that driveway. So that is the new proposed uh, landscape plan. I should also mention that we are actually proposing um, uh, oak trees along this, as a street tree along Junipero, although I believe that the street tree is a jacaranda. And uh, I just had this discussion with Bob Cunningham and Arcadia, and I, we've got to really um, drill down on this because I, I want to be sure that we're not creating a problem from a street st tree standpoint, but obviously we like the idea of oak trees being the street tree along this street. So um, that's kind of an aside that's uh, still pending. So that is all I have, and I'll be happy to answer questions. Okay, thank you. Do we have any questions for staff or for the applicant? Commissioner Jordan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just one st question for staff. So, Kathy, you mentioned in the um, in the staff report that um, the uh, separate use, the going to a learning center from what it, what has been proposed, um, would be restricted to still restricted to medical and related services only. But there's no um, uh, there's an SCD. There's no conditions of approval. Would that restriction just be in the form of the SCD letter? back to the project? We could, thank you, um, Chair and Commissioner Jordan. Uh, we could include it. It's not necessary. It's just um, that's what the allowed uses are on that site. And it's just, um, but I think I will, because it came up as a question, could include it in the letter just to uh, be restrict clear. Is, restrict but it's, is kind of an active verb word rather than go go live within your approval, but right. you're actually saying restrict and you're... Yeah. Well, it, it, like, it's already restricted, and we okay. would just bring that to light okay. to make sure because it could be a question later on Perfect. down the line. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Lodge. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Kernal, I think you said 210 seats. No, 110. Okay. I may oh, have I... said 210, but yes, okay. it's 110. Oh, By the way, I wanted to mention also Rick Scott, who's head of the Cancer Center, is here also with Dick Drew, if there's any questions you have about the uses. Okay. Um, I, I would think that this learning center might also be used not just for, for staff, but for patients, because I know there there's an educational process that goes on often with that, and... Um, would would that be uh, would that be an appropriate use? Yes, Mr. Chair, and Commissioner um, Lodge. Yes, it's for a medical use. I w was oh, that uh, expecting would, that, that would be part of the patients. training and education of patients and such. Yes. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Schwartz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have two questions. The first is on our uh, page two of our staff report, Ms. Kennedy. Uh, there's a reference um, here to that the use by others, I presume other than the Cancer Center, would require approval of a conditional use permit and consideration of any parking and traffic changes. So my question to you is, when you say use by others, is that other, other um, facilities uh, or services that are not 
described in the CO medical office zone ordinance that we have? Or is it any others than the property owner? We anticipated that because it's an auditorium that it might, um, people may be interested outside, off site yes. in using that facility, say in the evening when it's vacant. So that was what we were referring to. I know that the Oaks preschool next door had actually even asked about that. So it would be uses that are located off site in the community, people that may be nonprofits, others that may be interested in using a facility that appears to be available or vacant. So is the answer anybody other than or any any other entity other than the property owner themselves? Is that what the use by others exam? There are there are a number of other um, facilities and organizations in the neighborhood that actually fall under the CO medical office zone, um, hospital skilled nursing. I mean they're called out right in our in our zoning ordinance. Could any of those non-cancer center, but otherwise specified as acceptable uses in this zone be allowed to use the proposed learning center without triggering the need for a CUP? Yes, we're referring to non-medical uses. That's okay, that's thing, what the, the others other mean. Are, yes. So anything that's not covered in the zoning ordinance, the uses, but any of these other entities in the neighborhood, in the zone, that fall under Chapter 28.2, Five, one could possibly engage with the cancer center for um, potential use of the learning center yes. without triggering a CUP. Yes, that's Is correct. that it? Okay, great. Mr. Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Vincent. Me. At, at this point, I, I'm looking at the, the applicant's letter and the, the description of the intended use of the auditorium is not very detailed. I, I would appreciate hearing from the applicant as to their intended use, because I would expect that that would become basically the the project description for this substantial conformance determination. Quite honestly, if if the way I see the auditorium working on this site is if it's a conjunctive use of the cancer center, I would be more concerned about traffic impacts, parking impacts, and so forth if the cancer center was operating it in its intended and normal fashion and a third party use was coming to this site in order to do the uh, to use the auditorium for something not related to cancer center business i think that that, that would present a different uh, a different aspect to this use i mean it, what i'm seeing in this letter is a relatively limited description of it and i'd, I'd like to hear more about that so we can handle that issue clearly mm -hmm. in the substantial conformance determination. Perhaps uh, the applicant can answer that, but also, uh, Mr. Vincent, uh, we're taking into consideration the parking impact by the required parking spaces in the parking structure, are we not? That's true. Mr. Canal, do you want to answer the attorney's yeah, and, question? And, uh, certainly, if, if Rick, if you want to add to what I'm saying, I think that it's... I, I don't think that there is has been a, a huge amount of thought that has gone into exactly how this is going to be managed. What the the certainly the discussions have been that there's a real need for something like this in this neighborhood, and so certainly cottage is in the mix here. You could definitely have doctors and staff from cottage coming down to some learning center event. Um, that is happening during the day and the and the nice thing about this location is that we would anticipate that people from cottage people from Sansom clinic likewise uh, Would be very likely to be using this facility and they would hopefully walk to it I would think that if in in if there was ever some event at this learning center that occurred during the day that involved invitations to outside medical groups or whatever if that ever happened i feel the cancer center would be a, a would be obliged to manage that from a from a car standpoint because during the day obviously the cancer center is operating we want to make sure there are adequate spaces in the parking structure to facilitate that so i have a feeling scheduling anything like that that wasn't going to be either staff coming from cancer center from sansom from cottage in in a within a walkable distance 
that they would make sure that it was a time that would not impact Cancer Center. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's again, a, a need that I think everybody is excited about in this location. And so there is likely to be things that come up um, that we can't anticipate now. And, and I, I, I really believe Cancer Center will, will have to manage that if it ever causes a parking problem, if that makes sense. Um, thank you. Mr. Chair, were you going to ask uh, something else? I wanted to continue. I, so as a follow-on to that, um, Mr. Vincent, at the appropriate time, if not now, today, maybe you could help me understand how to navigate or thread um, the needle between not triggering a CUP uh, and, and providing flexibility, but it, some further definition, clarification, possibly be appropriate in conditions of approval. I, I would like your advice on that um, before, before we wrap this item up today, Mr. Vincent, um, given what we've heard from the applicant. Uh, let's see. Thank you for that. I had, I had one other question. Uh, this goes to uh, actually our CO medical office zone uh, ordinance language. Under, um, on the first page, uh, I guess it's listed as page 507 of our ordinance. Uh, in the section entitled Uses Permitted, letter D, I'm wondering if the term accessory building, I don't know if Mr. Vincent, if you have the history with, I see this was revised in 2008, this ordinance. Could the learning center be considered an accessory building? Accessory buildings and accessory uses. Now it says such as, but this is such a limited uh, this, you know, description of such as. And I don't know what was intended here since I was not part of this ordinance crafting. Mr. Chair, Commissioner Schwartz, yes, I feel like that it does fall under we, that we could, category. We could make that, yes. we could justify accessory building yes. and accessory uses uh, correlating with the Learning Center and its proposed or described and proposed uses? Yes. Okay. Would, Mr. Vincent, did you have anything Mr. more Mr. Chair, members of the commission, the, the zoning ordinance has a definition of accessory use. It's a secondary use that is not a primary use. Mm -hmm. the, the term auditorium has been suggested as, in your consideration of mm -hmm. this within the CO zone as a, 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 and your comment regarding a use pursuant to subdivision J, or subsection J of uses permitted where it mm -hmm. refers to other businesses and occupations that are substantially similar to the uses enumerated. The SP8, the staff has suggested to you that the specific plan 8, the hospital zone, yeah. has a primary use of auditorium announced in that zone. Mm -hmm. And staff has suggested for your consideration to have that primary use considered to be another business or occupation that is substantially similar to the enumerated zone uses within the CO zone. I'd, I would recommend that that's the appropriate way to consider that issue as opposed to saying that an auditorium in this location is an accessory use when it, it was enumerated as a primary use as an ex expressly granted primary use within the SP-8. If you're getting the distinction, it's not, a it's not an accessory use. The auditorium is not an accessory use. It's a primary use. Consider it as such as whether or not it is appropriately considered as a business or occupation that is substantially similar to the other uses enumerated within the CO zone. Okay, Mr. Vincent, so, you know, I'm looking at both the staff report and then the SP-8 hospital zone language. Our staff report from Ms. Kennedy refers to um, this as an an ancillary to the, outpatient, to the outpatient cancer treatment facility. Could you one more time please point out specifically in the SP-8 hospital zone language where you would suggest that we find uh, the reference that would correlate with the Learning Center and its proposed uses, just so I can note that for myself. 
Mr. Chair, members of the commission, it's it's enumerated in in subsection A three Q auditoriums. Auditoriums. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I think those are my questions for now, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Peugeot. Thank you, and I appreciate the discussion on what's part of the allowable uses and the classification. I, I think that cleared up most of my questions on, on that part of it. But just to add, it seems to me that whatever is traditionally typical, the kinds of uses the Cancer Center as a whole is accustomed to having would be also included for this auditorium. I mean, it's named Cancer Center, but the Cancer Center is a complex of medical buildings. And so that makes it make sense to me, what was just described by our, our city attorney. Um, also, the other thing I just wanted to um, bring up, and it's not... I guess it's a question in the form of a question. Um, the landscape plan that we have up on the screen here today um, shows some minor changes, but the remainder of it is the originally approved landscape plan. I believe I wanted to clarify that, and I also appreciate that you brought that here today. So I don't think it was on our full set of plans that we got, and that was actually one of my questions is what's happening particularly along the street there. So I see that you still have a number of street trees proposed, which didn't come out clearly to me in the, in the information that we got before this. So I just wanted to clarify that this proposed landscape is part of the substantial conformity determination. This is, we have not officially submitted this to Kathy. Um, we just got this from Arcadia Studios. So this is a, a compilation of their latest landscape plan. So for example, uh, there next to Cancer Center in the area next to the creek where um, the existing Cancer Center building is today, um, we've greatly reduced the water element that was in that, um, that component. Um, just because of the drought. And so the, the landscape uh, architect has been working on changes, and, and many of these have already been reviewed by the ABR. And I'm not sure really whether we've done that as a, as a, as a strict substantial conformity determination, but these things have been in the ABR process. It's been ongoing for some time. Maybe I can ask this question in another way. Going through the um, resolution from 2010, I'm assuming that if it's not information that was included in today's description of changes, then all the other conditions continue to apply unchanged. And so when I look at this, um, there is a condition, I'm not sure which one it is right now, but there is a condition regarding um, public improvements and street trees that talk about, I think, four street trees along Unipero. So you haven't requested that that be changed. So I'm assuming that even if the tree type and the exact location size, all those specifics um, aren't completely finalized, that there will be four new street trees. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, okay. absolutely. And and the one thing here that again we have not officially done because we obviously want this. We've we've reviewed the the building with ABR, but ABR actually has not reviewed this landscape plan. So, for instance, I did mm -hmm. review the trees that I forgot that are along the driveway are Catalina Ironwood. So they're going to have to approve this this final landscape plan. And I think the con approved conditions of a, of approval give flexibility for that, but um, just to assure that you're not, basically, I think what I already just said and you just confirmed, I think is fine. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Campanella. Uh, yes, a question for Mr. Vincent. On the reference we just looked at uh, on the SP8 zone for auditoriums, uh, land use uh, A3Q, uh, I just wanted to confirm that the site that we're talking about in particular is within land use area A and not in B, which is parking structures. I don't know if there was a split in land uses 
with Mr. the assemblage of these parcels. Mr. Chair, members of the commission, this the site in question on this application is out, is not within the specific plan eight. Specific plan eight specifically covers the campus of Cottage Hospital. The, the staff is referring to the uses within specific plan eight for the suggestion of explaining what might be considered as a business or occupation that is substantially similar to the uses enumerated above since the CO zone does allow for hospitals and other similar buildings and facilities for the treatment of ailments. Basically, a hospital can, can also occur in the CO zone as well as the SP8. Staff is looking to that reference to a hospital and the uses enumerated and, and considered to be part of a, a regular hospital as being suggestive of what uses could be considered under subsection J of section 2851030, the uses allowed within the CO zone. So uh, when, it would, when it would be time for a motion, is there a reference that needs to be made to the SP8 at all? Or, or Mr. Chair, members of the commission, I would, I would simply suggest that the commission, if you consider the auditorium use being proposed as being consistent with the businesses and occupations that are enumerated in the CO zone, you make that comment and that, the, and that statement as part of your motion for this, the community development director to make that determination pursuant to subsection J of 2851030. Thank you. You know, we spent a lot of time talking about the potential use of this building when the basic uh, issue before us is changing the designation of two buildings between commercial and residential. And I would ask if they hadn't decided to change and continue to modify the current uh, breast cancer building to uh, continue to be a commercial and modified it to be a big conference room would we be having this discussion? Ms. Kennedy? Mr. Vincent? Mr. Thompson, um, that's a good question. It, it was approved to be commercial offices and they could have turned it into conference rooms and such like that without yeah, and that was the, looking at the floor Where I was going to go also, we're calling this an auditorium, but every uh, office building almost every office building has some form of a conference room or conference rooms. Where does it cease becoming a conference room and be classified as an auditorium? It's for people to meet and pass out information and so forth. So before we get too wrapped around the axle talking about how this building will eventually be used, I think we need to focus on the fact that it's the, the changing from residential to commercial and swapping with the, bu the building next door. Uh, Commissioner Schwartz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So your question prompts me to ask cla cla uh, cl staff for clarification today because in the last paragraph of our staff report, uh, it looks like staff is requesting of the Planning Commission today to provide input on two things. Substantial conformance request of the site plan change, which you just referenced, and this is the part B, whether or not the proposed learning center however we define that or the applicant defines it, is in substantial conformance with the Planning Commission approval of the non-residential building. So I think we have a, sounds to me, Ms. Kennedy, like we have, you'd like us to uh, provide kind of a two-fold feedback for you today, if, that, if I'm reading this correctly. Is that right? And I don't know if you have a Trying slide. Trying to switch something. <laughs> I think you have a slide to that effect. Got the wrong, wrong button. And, okay. Um, we talked about that a little bit at the site visit that would be helpful just in guiding Planning Commission's comments that in these two areas. So actually three. So I have these okay, up three, here. This so we is have the a question, third. and I've divided into basically three areas. Okay. This slide is very helpful. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Open up to uh, public testimony. We have one uh, request to speak from John and Kathy Denver. Come on up to the podium. Thompson, Good afternoon, Commission members. Good afternoon. My name is <clears throat> my name is John Denver, Dr. John Denver. I'm a physician now retired. Um, I have 
for many years, I hate to say it, 40, had a good, close working relationship with the people, taking care of patients, um, with the people of the cancer center. They've been good people. I trust they are good people and, and will continue to do good work that will be bettered by their new facilities. Um, presumably the auditorium or conference room, whatever you choose to call it, will provide a, a benefit and a further benefit in their, their work. Um, with We have also been neighbors to the Cancer Center since they located on West Pueblo Street, and we have been good neighbors to them, I think, and they, I believe, have been good neighbors to us with one single exception. Um, so as to the plan at hand, which is the issue before you, my only question and concern, because I'm, well, the map's not there, but I'm, I'm the owner of the property that's immediately adjacent to the roadway entering the complex. And uh, I, aside from where the par cars will park, it will generate a distinct increase in traffic. Presumably 110 people will be 110 cars driving past our building, and all in a very short period of time probably, which I think will intensify the traffic and intensify the use of the uh, property. That's a question for you folks to address, but I would hope that there'd be some way to minimize the traffic coming past my building on a driveway that's two feet from the property line and five, six feet from the building, and perhaps the other driveway could be used um, where there isn't any impact, I don't think, on an immediate neighbor other than the, the nursery school, uh, <clears throat> which isn't close to the driveway, I don't think. Um, as to the exception I mentioned, I, I know that's not for discussion right now, but I have sent a letter to which I think all of you have received. Uh, if you have read it, I thank you very much for your time in reading it. If you hadn't, haven't, I urge you, please, please read the letter with our overall concerns about this project. And um, we have worked with uh, Brian, the architect, um, and attempted to resolve some of our concerns. Uh, I thought we had, and then it sort of went backwards, uh, and I believe Brian is trying to bring it back to the point where we can try to resolve that. Um, I would hope not to take your time about that and or any other you know board time, but would hopefully resolve that with the architect and with the management of the cancer center. Um, so I thank you for um, your time today, and I thank you very much for the time reading our letter to you and for your consideration of that. And I ask for your help if it's needed to try to resolve our, our concerns, our worries. We are truly, and I mean it sincerely, we are profoundly worried having been there and seen the impact of floodwaters going through adjacent to our building. We are truly worried about the impact of this plan and about whether the mitigating plans or mitigating facilities to handle that water are adequate. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, I'm sure Mr. Cornell and the Cancer Center will continue to work with you to work out your uh, boundary interface issues. I'm sure they will, and I hope we can do that quickly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public speakers? And we'll close the public testimony and bring it back to the Planning Commission for discussion. Any comments? Mr. or Commissioner Jordan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm uh, going to support the staff recommendations. I don't have any problem making the uh, making a recommendation that this is a uh, an appropriate change. That it uh, clearly falls within the uh, the uh, the nexus and the thought process that staff has presented. Um, and I think uh, knowing this project. Uh, I went back in my old. I went back in my old book, and I just think I picked up the wrong book. I think I had two binders ago, but I think I saw this once before, uh, my first year in the commission. So, which means it's been around five plus years, and you guys, I think, would tell me it's probably been around longer than five plus years. Um, but uh, I think it reflects uh, a couple of things. It reflects uh, obviously the change in their tenant and and what's going on in the ground. It also uh, it uh, reflects. Uh, a growing need in the uh, in the medical uh, community to uh, have a facility like this, both internally and externally. I think externally, I'll talk about it a little bit. 
but it's clearly it's clearly consistent with the zoning. Um, I find it uh, encouraging that uh, all the property, even though you didn't have to, you uh, noticed all the adjacent property owners, and there's only one in the building today. Um, so obviously, uh, the the other property owners aren't um, upset. You know, the I know Scott's working on some language, but I. I as part of the discussion the other day on where you would broach into CUP, I personally am more um, in favor of a, I guess, a large gray area of leeway or liberal definition of what your intended uses could be. Um, I get exactly what staff is saying, and I, I hear some other commissioners trying to peg you into who it's going to be and what's their relationship to medical, but I also could see a similar relationship with the Cancer Center as um, the Museum of Natural History does their, uh, uh, they, I think they call it topics of interest or something. The last one I was up to, there was a couple years ago, uh, had to do with homelessness. Clearly nothing having to do with the museum, well, you could probably find a road there to get to a nexus with the Museum of Natural History. But just as you could find a road to get to a nexus with a Cancer Center and um, community health or community well-being topics. And these would actually be sponsored, in my, in my liberal interpretation, they would not be third-party groups coming in and renting or using your place, but they would be cancer center-sponsored um, outreach or educational forums, but they might have nothing to do with cancer. And I see that as a tremendous benefit going down the road. And so if there's really no way to uh, liberalize that interpretation as to your uses, I'd encourage you, once you, you know, get through the, uh, the dollar issues and the design issues, to look towards doing a CUP for that purpose, because I think there's going to be a huge benefit to the medical and, and the rest of the, the medical community and the rest of the community having that facility so close to all the kind of the medical nexus and what that could bring to the community. So I'd encourage you to do that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Pujo. Thank you. I will also be supporting the project. Um, just a few comments I wanted to make. One is, first of all, I think the current design is an improvement over the prior design and designation of uses. Um, the architecture, I think, of this version is an improvement, and I believe that with the continued residential use of the Victorian, the restoration of that building ought to be simpler. Um, so I think that's a good thing. Um, a good thing without really pushing the limits on any of the other conditions. So, so in that regard, I'm very supportive. I would like to just mention a few things, that there are a number of conditions that are not of the original approval and the, um, I guess the current approval before today that are not changing and they're important conditions and I would just like to highlight them because they would continue on after this um, determination is made. One is mentioned earlier, the landscaping condition and the requirement for street trees does not change. Um, and also in terms of the, the public um, issues that were brought up today in terms of traffic, there's both a transportation management plan requirement, and that's condition D12, and a transportation demand management condition, which is condition E1, that requires a full um, program to minimize additional traffic impacts, assumably keeping it to the level that was identified in the environmental review. And um, this, I assume, and I guess I'll, I'll look for a little nod here, this, I assume, would include this new use. So the transportation demand management program that's developed will also need to include the auditorium use, which should give relief to any concerns about additional traffic impact, in my view. Um, in terms of uh, drainage and flood control, there's a stormwater 
quality management plan requirement, which is very onerous, and that's condition C6, requires a lot of engineering and um, a high standard. Um, I find that satisfactory. And also um, condition D3 on drainage as well. I think those are very firm, strict protections for anything involving drainage and, and stormwater control. And then finally, there is a overall monitoring and reporting plan, condition E1, which means that there'll be a continuing oversight on the conditions and that should provide, I think, comfort to neighbors in that regard, as well as a construction noticing requirement. So I think in that regard, there's plenty of opportunity for any concerned neighbors to get their questions answered and their concerns addressed. So I will be supporting the project. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Schwartz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to take these three uh, items that are on the screen here first, and then I'll make some additional comments. First, uh, the change from commercial back to residential. Uh, we have a supporting documentation for this approval right here in our CO Medical Office Zone language. It's in the very first paragraph and the very first sentence of our zoning ordinance, which uh, spells out the suitability for use of medical, dental, related professional services, as well as residences. So this flexibility of retaining or changing the use, reverting back to a different use within these uses, which includes residential, in my view, supports both numbers one and two on uh, the slide we have. Then commercial use change from office space to learning center. I have a few comments here. Um, first, back in uh, June of 2010, uh, when this resolution Exhibit E in our package was passed by both the Planning Commission and City Council. It speaks to community priority designation, and I want to touch on this because I think this is important when looking at a change of use um, in an area of public health that is, uh, it's not only important for our community to be uh, supporting that, but even since 2008, uh, when our zoning ordinance was revised, or even 2010 when this resolution was passed, we continue to learn more about cancers. And I, I can't imagine anything more important than providing a physical facility, a learning center, in which we bring the ongoing state-of-the-art scientific medical information to those who are directly facing cancer and their families, support systems, and so forth. So I think um, we have that embedded in a number of our critical um, city documents. Uh, then we also, as Mr. Vincent pointed out, in our SP8 hospital zone under A3Q, you know, I think auditorium is probably a, a general reference to something like a learning center or a center in which learning can take place. Um, again, this is probably a, a little out of date in terms of what else we could add to this list. But this, to me, touches on what staff has asked of us on page two of our staff report. And here's what Ms. Kennedy has told us in the staff report. Although an auditorium is not listed as an allowed use in the CO zone, as it is in the adjacent specific plan, that's the SP8 hospital zone. Staff is in support of the use as being ancillary, this is why I asked my questions earlier today, to the outpatient cancer treatment facility. So it is with that, um, I would say rationalization and with that nexus, that argument being made to the nexus, that I too will be supporting this. A uh, couple of other comments before I conclude, um, Mr. Chair. Regarding parking, the current uses as, as proposed, as scoped, uh, are sufficient for the parking that the city has approved. In terms of the learning center, possibly someday becoming of interest uh, to, to parties other than the cancer center, cottage, Sansom, I can easily see a time when in this neighborhood in particular, this type of facility could be of interest to other 
um, organizations and uses outside of, but similar to, related to the Cancer Center, Cottage, and Sansom. And again, these uses that are already defined in our zoning ordinance. I don't recall, perhaps staff could correct me, I don't recall that we have any other uh, well, other than the Cottage Hospital Auditorium, which they say they max out regularly with. I think perhaps Ron Biscaro told that to us. So other than the Cottage Hospital Auditorium or conference room, I don't believe we have anything else like it in this neighborhood, in this vicinity. So I can see this becoming a popular facility for related and non-cancer center learning opportunities. So. With that, yes, we have a traffic demand um, uh, study here, and we have a certain parking, uh, parking plan. But I still go back, and without tying the Cancer Center's hands, I have no interest in doing that. I just want to make sure we are performing due diligence as a planning commission. Parking is discussed in almost every single hearing of this planning commission for good reasons. Our community is sensitive to it. And it's already a highly impacted neighborhood in terms of on-street parking. So I will leave it to Mr. Vincent whether or not he feels that any further advice is appropriate for the Planning Commission in terms of uh, direction back to the Community Development Director on uh, conditions of approval. I would just say that given the anticipated popularity of this learning center beyond the Cancer Center Cottage in Sansom, should there be such a time when you receive requests from other entities, still allowed uses under the zone, but not those three entities I just mentioned. What would be the path, Mr. Vincent, for the Cancer Center, without triggering a CUP, I'm gonna underscore that again, um, being able to allow the use, um, I don't know what kind of a process they would need to undertake with the city, but I feel that it's my responsibility to anticipate that and what comes with that is potential parking impacts for those who are not walking over from the nearby medical uh, facilities, chiropractic facilities, long-term care facilities such as Mission Terrace and so forth. So I'm gonna leave that to Mr. Vincent to comment on, otherwise I'm, I'm willing uh, to let that go. Um, to Mr. Denver's question and concerns, I have confidence knowing Mr. Cornell, the years I have, that he is going to um, continue to provide, to exert every possible means of negotiating to a mutually acceptable solution. We do have in our 2010 resolution under C6 on page five of our resolution, a stormwater pollution control and drainage systems maintenance requirement. That's even been, I believe, brought, sort of modernized even since this resolution. Yes, you're nodding, Mr. Cornell. So we are, we are obligated, and the applicant is obligated, Mr. Denver, to apply all of these state-of-the-art current regulatory requirements to managing um, water, water flow and water drainage. So I'm confident that that will be resolved uh, appropriately and hopefully satisfactorily to all the parties. So I think that's it for me, Mr. Chair. As I said, and just to wrap up, I am going to be in support of staff's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lodge. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I can readily make the substantial conformance determination, and I think this actually is better than what was originally approved because instead of medical office building, you're going to have a facility that will be of considerable use to the entire medical community. Um, this, we still have the six residential units, uh, and it makes sense to keep the one well, the breast, where the breast cancer center is to uh, revert it back to residential. So I, I think this is an improvement, actually, over what was originally approved, and so I will be supporting it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Campanella. Uh, thank you. Uh, I also am supportive of the changes uh, in, in uh, determining... Uh, a substantial conformance with the Planning Commission approval on the, uh, the switching of uses on the two buildings and also on the Learning Center. Uh, I think my colleagues have really spoken about the benefit of that center. Uh, I feel comfortable, too, that perhaps if there were some change in that use, that there might be some flexibility without a CDP. 
uh, given the fact that this is being parked right now at a pretty restrictive commercial parking requirement. Is that correct? I, I believe that's four. Each, every four chairs has to have one parking space. Mm -hmm. So that's about 25 or so parking requirement, which for a 2,000 square foot something commercial space would be way in excess of perhaps the other permitted uses that would be allowed in the zone, I, I believe. So if they're uh, looking at some flexibility in the future, perhaps parking is not going to be a constraint. So I'm hopeful of that, given what they have to park now. So I am in support, and uh, thank you. Thank you. Well, I also think I will support it, and I think it's a, an improvement of, uh, compared to the original plan. You now have three residential uses adjacent rather than having uh, a commercial building inter interspersed between the two other residential buildings, which makes a lot more sense for whoever is going to be living there in the future. As far as the uh, issue about the use of the commercial building, if you had been proposing a large conference room or auditorium in the main building, we probably wouldn't be having this discussion at all. Um, I see no issue with having that as a conference room slash auditorium room, and so I would find it within substantial conformance to the original approval. Do we have any other uh, last comments before we wrap it up? There's no motion required to take this back to uh, the development director, and he will be making the uh, substantial conformance determination. Mr. Vincent, you have something sure. you want to say? I, I do have one comment to make. Uh, the, the applicant's materials do describe intended uses for the learning center, and, and if the commission were wishing to entertain the uh, uses beyond those enumerated within the applicant's letter, I would recommend that the commission make that intention clear in your statements to the community development director. To be more plain, if, if you or any other commissioners want to allow uses other than medical training for Cancer Center and Sansom staff, then I would say so in, in your comments to the director. Okay. Uh, does the applicant have any comment about just, how they would like to just have that one approach? additional thought I think again you know this this is going to evolve as far as how it is used but th certainly the intent is that because of its location uh, staff uh, medical professionals etc that will be using it we're going to are going to come from cancer center Sansom cottage during the day what's interesting about this building is that at night when Cancer Center is no longer operating because it's an it's a ambulatory facility that closes at night, um, there's going to be a ton of parking there that certainly could service nighttime uses that you know would benefit the community. So there is a, a logic there, certainly, and there's ample parking to support it. Um, so just food for thought. Is that what the applicant is looking for no i mean i don't i don't think so i think certainly knowing the institutions that are involved in this uh, facility i i think it 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 you know they want to make sure that it's of community benefit i don't think that there's any interest in in producing income by renting it out at night or anything like that um certainly the more flexibility for something like this the better but it's certainly interesting, and we haven't had a lot of discussions about it, but it's just it's interesting that there is going to be a lot of parking in that parking structure available um, you know when cancer center is not operating and so it it's it's a resource that could be used in the community so perhaps uh, in keeping with what Mr. Vincent is looking for before he pens up a response for the community development director uh, would it be uh, the wish of the commission to include a simple addition to say in other medical operators, the cancer center and Sampson staff and other medical operators. Uh, Mr. Commissioner Chair. Schwartz, you, uh, Mr. Vincent, yeah, I, I think I'm hoping that the commission's not uh, belaboring under the impression that I'm that I'm against flexibility with this auditorium. I, I, I mean, I'm familiar with the the Burtness Auditorium at Cottage. It's used for all kinds of topics, mm -hmm. that many of which don't have anything to do with medicine. So 
if you're looking to the SP8 zone and the auditorium statement in that zone, and you're finding that to be a, a substantially similar use to the uses enumerated in the CO zone, you can have an auditorium that functions for topics other than medical care. My point only in, in the comments I've made is that years from now, if a neighbor complains about an auditorium use at night and it doesn't involve medicine or the cancer center or SANSM, I want the staff, when they go back and look at the record of this substantial conformance determination, to be clear as to what the commission's intentions and comments were to the community development director. That's all I'm, I'm that's the point of my comments. It, they're not about trying to constrain the uses within the auditorium. It's about when the re having this record reflect what the commission intends the community development director to understand from their comments. Okay, Commissioner Schwartz. Mr. Vincent, I very much appreciate what you've just said, and this is the reason I raise this, because I want us all to be clear and an appropriate record um, to be documented. I'm wondering, Mr. Kernal, if it would um, be uh, mutually beneficial and it would achieve you know, your client's interests. When I look at the justification language on the second page of your letter, that does get to be very specific, and I'm wondering if we're all looking for we all have an objective of opening that up and providing a little more flexibility, right? It says learning centers use would be for medical training and advancement of cancer center and SANSOM staff. But to Mr. Vincent's point that he just made about the use of the cottage hospital auditorium, which is used for more than medical training and advancement, I, I don't know what the language is for cottage hospital, for example, Mr. Vincent. Can we look to... I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what, what governs the uses of that if we have anything in writing, but maybe that's an analogy that, what do you? Mr. Chair, members of the commission, I would submit that any use of the auditorium has the same impacts to the neighborhood as any other use of the auditorium. Mm -hmm. Once you, the subject matter of the discussion doesn't matter to the neighborhood. It could be medical uses. It could be, I know that Burtness is used for AA meetings. I know that they, mm -hmm. they do all kinds of things in, in auditoriums. Really, it was just the, I, I can, if you wish to have greater flexibility, allow greater flexibility, just simply state that you believe that the, the learning center and the auditorium use is an appropriate use for that facility and that it may be used for the enumerated uses within the applicant's letter as well as other auditorium uses. And just leave it at that. Okay. Commissioner Pujol. Thank you. Um, I'm going to just bring up a couple of um, suggestions on this topic that I feel at least this comfortable with and um, I would propose at a bare minimum that we allow wording that would do the following and, and perhaps based on further discussion maybe there's something else that opens up but at least I think if we're looking at the justification page um, two of the applicant's letter, as, as Commissioner Schwartz pointed out, um, it starts out saying the learning center's use would be for medical training and advancement of cancer center and SAMSUM staff. I would at least alter that to say would be for medical training and advancement primarily for the cancer center and SAMSUM facility. And the reason I say it that way, what I'm trying to get at is, I th to me, what we're, it's in front of us now is requesting that the auditorium be basically for medical uses, but really primarily for and under the control of the cancer center. Here it says only staff. In the um, staff report description, it says, uh, I think it says staff and and there's another term, but neither of those include the clientele. So certainly we should broaden it to that. And so I picked up on the facility language from the original resolution because I think that's what it's called in the opening paragraph of the 2010 resolution. And I add the word primarily in 
strategically in this part of the phrase, medical training and advancement primarily for cancer center, because I think if the majority of the use was for the cancer center, and there were from time to time some uses that came from cottage or related as long as it didn't supplant the main use, then that, to me it fits within this substantial conformity determination. So that would be my suggestion. I just throw it out there for discussion. Commissioner Jordan. Well, that confused me more because that sounded more restrictive to me than less restrictive. So. Um, since I'll, I'll just throw in, I'll grow, grab for the brass ring, I'd just support auditorium use, period. Um, I would remind you, it's fully parked, no matter what time of day. This, this facility is fully parked. We're not asking for any parking concessions. They're going to do their little plans, and they can apply it at different times of the day and see what the results are. But on paper, in theory, right now, this is fully parked and an acceptable use. And I... I I'd just like to grab the brass ring and give them the ultimate flexibility and just get out of this whole uh, medical-related cancer center, Sansom hospital type of use and let them, let them have the flexibility to design this program and then balance it against uh, uh, the community. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Commissioner Schwartz. So I'll take a stab at this. Let's look at the, the, um, a simplified and clearer first sentence that might read the following. The learning center's use would primarily be for a cancer center and Sansom, period. We don't have to talk about medical training or advancement or who at either the cancer center or Sansom could make use of and benefit from the learning center. Would that work, um, either Mr. Kernal or planning commission? Yes, Mr. Kernal, that would work. Okay. So I get a nod from the applicant. How about from my fellow planning commissioners? Does that both clarify but also simplify the language. And Mr. Vincent, for the record, when if staff has to come back to this at such time as somebody has a question or concern. Um, Mr. Chair Thompson, Canale. Commissioner Schwartz, are you, were you going to add another sentence? Or was nope. that, oh, you weren't. That's it, period. Oh, okay. I said, and then I was just, okay. I, but Mr. Vincent had asked for, you know, a clear record. That's what I was saying. This is both clear, but also provides some flex. Just that that revised in, one the, sentence. The comment I would make is that you know, look. I mean, in the spirit of sustainability, the the more this building is utilized, the more flexible it is, the the better. It, it, it has more purpose. Exactly. Um, and and we talked about. I mean, two great examples of users that would love to be able to use this would be the Oaks Preschool for their monthly parent teacher meetings. It's perfect size for them. The other would be the Oak Park Foundation when they have their monthly meetings or whatever to talk about Oak Park kind of issues. I mean, there's so that's you know two right off the bat that aren't medical related. And gosh, why not? Why you know would it would be silly to not be able to allow them to use this? And and we talked certainly staff. I think was being cautious, which they should be, relative to the zone and didn't want to open it up for whatever. But I think um, what uh, Mr. Vincent is, is saying is, hey, if you guys think that's a good idea, then, you know, let George know it's a good idea and, you know, put that on the record and, you know, at least, at least we have that. And so then we can let the Oaks Preschool use it once a month and, and we don't have to worry about coming back here and filing for a CUP and it's all, it's all good. Mr. Chair, may I Mr. Tag Vincent. Along? Mr. Vincent. So we, we have Commissioner Schwartz's first sentence regarding the primary use by the Cancer Center in Sansom. If you wish to entertain the other uses, not medically related or any other relation, I would re recommend the second sentence. When not in use for the Cancer Center or Sansom, the auditorium may be used for other community uses, period. Okay, that sounds fine to me. Uh, Commissioner Pujo. Um, yeah, I, I would be fine with Commissioner Schwartz's shortened wording as well as Mr. Scott's. What the key here for me is the word primarily because it's the main use. The other uses are lesser uses and don't take over the main use. Um, to me, that gives a protection 
of what the intended use is in conformity with the zone district as well. Um, just to mention uh, to Commissioner Jordan's point, I have a concern to eliminate that and just say auditorium opens a plethora of uses that were never considered in the original approval or in this request. And to me, that would mean going back, checking with staff, because that's a whole new ball game. That, to me, that could be a movie theater. So, um, so I am supportive of the wording presented um, by Commissioner Schwartz and as amended and suggested amended by uh, Mr. Scott. That would be fine. Commissioner Lodge. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I would like to see it changed to primarily for the medical community rather than having it just restricted to sit, you know, making it primarily the Cancer Center and Sansom because there were, I can see all kinds of other medically related um, teaching that, would, that might go on there. Um, and that, that would then in, include the patients. And then I also could, I would like to see the greater flexibility as suggested in um, Mr. Vincent's suggested second sentence. So I, I, could, I could support both of those. The uh, wording suggested by Commissioner Schwartz and Mr. Vincent uh, would not preclude what you just said. I realize that, but I, it, it made it, se it seems unnecessarily restrictive. Me. No. Okay. Any other? I just, Mr. Mr. Chair, Schwartz. I just want to take us back to the actual zoning language, which is beyond the word medical. So it, it, it's medical, dental, related. So I think the more we're looking for flexibility, how do we open it up? It sounds like the majority of the commissioners are willing to provide for this flexibility. So I, I would be hesitant to suggest the word medical in there. Um, or primarily for the medical community when the zoning allows for more than that. Um, and it sounds like most of the commissioners are in support of the Learning Center being used for a greater community resource, but still within, within the zoning allowances. Thank you. Any other com Commissioner Campanella? Uh, yeah, I, I agree on the flexibility. I think uh, one benefit is that there could be meetings in other buildings or assemblages that would, would be uh, within this neighborhood that may not have enough parking on site to handle that type of crowd. And then there'd be parking on the street and impacts on the neighborhood. By allowing uh, these types of meetings and, and uh, within the auditorium where you have the ability to park on site, whereas you may not if you're doing some other gathering in some other facility. So I like the idea of the flexibility. I like the idea of the two sentences uh, because it, it, it gives a total allowance. And I think it also allows for name changes. I mean, we, we've seen various medical facilities change their name. So if we're just restricting it to the current name, I guess there's language about successors and interest and things like that. But I think if you do, your second sentence would cover either the named beneficiaries of the site as well as any other which could include facilities that change names or consolidate or whatever in the future. So uh, I'm in favor of the wording that uh, Mr. Scott uh, Vincent came up with. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Calarte and uh, Ms. Kennedy, do you have enough information, Mr. Vincent, to move forward to the community development director with this? They seem to be satisfied. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. And uh, does the applicant have any final closing comments? No. Okay. So we'll call that complete. Move on to our next item, the administrative agenda. Staff hearing officer liaison report. Just uh, three quick items. Three or four last week, uh, nothing special to report. Most, I think, three out of four of them were just... Um, uh, second floor revisions to uh, windows or small details that were already in a, um, a setback zone. So nothing exciting. Okay. Do we have any other committee and liaison reports? Commissioner Campanella. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, since I was absent at the last meeting, I, I just want to update a couple of meetings of the ABR. 
uh, one that was held on August 3rd, uh, uh, Direct Relief uh, is proposing to build a facility at 6100 Hollister, which would have a new street name of uh, 6100 Wallace Becknell Road. Uh, they went through initial concept review. Uh, this is going, uh, it's approximately 80,000 square feet uh, in phase one, another 30,000 square feet in phase two that are reserved. Uh, both of these have been approved as community benefit by the city council. Uh, they may, in fact, do all of the work at one time for efficiency. Uh, this will uh, be coming to uh, a PC for development plan approval in the future. Uh, at the same meeting uh, on the 3rd of August, 15 South Hope, uh, which is proposed in the overlay zone of AUD, 48 units, a combination of studios and one bedrooms. Uh, this is a modification of a prior townhouse project. Uh, this is going back to ABR for uh, recommended changes. It will be coming to PC when it's ready for concept review and our comments that go back to ABR. Uh, 1818 Castillo on the 21st, the uh, appeal was upheld uh, by the city council. Uh, this would be coming back to us at a, a date sometime in October uh, for specific judgments on our part and communication back to the uh, uh, design Review Board, ABR, on uh, comments that the City Council came up with on the project, some modifications they'd like to see. Uh, 350 Hitchcock Way on uh, July 20th uh, was before ABR. Uh, this, this is a Lexus dealership. There will be a demo of 15,000 square feet and a building of 39,000 square feet. This is going to be a two-story auto uh, dealership. This will be coming to us to review two development plans that are associated with this project. Uh, of interest, uh, if I can take the time, not coming back, to, not coming to us, but at the airport, uh, 500 Fowler was before ABR on the 20th. There's going to be an acre of uh, parking topped with uh, 677 kilowatts of photovoltaic system. Uh, that's going through review process. Now, that was uh, the initial uh, review. Uh, Cliff Drive 721, there was a courtesy review. Uh, Santa Barbara City College is demoing their campus center, a 30,000 square foot two-story building, replacing it with the same square footage in a three-story structure. Uh, the courtesy review uh, gave uh, favorable comments by ABR. That's uh, what I have on that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Lodge. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have two Historic Landmarks Commission meetings to report on. Uh, the first one was for July, July 29th. Uh, this is a project that will be uh, coming to us at 1414 Park Place, otherwise known as the Municipal Tennis Courts. And there's, there's a proposal to install a new playground and walking path. Um, kids play in the parking lot all the, for years, and they want to provide a, an appropriate place and some playground equipment. Um, there were neighbor comments and concerns because they were also proposing to close the parking lot with a gate at night, and the neighbors all use the parking lot for parking because there isn't enough in the neighborhood. So we'll, we'll, we'll hear about that, I'm sure. Uh, the other item was one that we saw before, 340 East Los Olivos Street, the uh, Edwards Dole House. And uh, the Historic Landmarks Commission also was very pleased to see the restoration that is going to go on there, and uh, we're very happy with that project. Um, then yesterday, uh, August 12th, there were two properties that were on the agenda for removal of those buildings because they no longer meet the criteria to qualify as historic resources due to alterations of character defining features. So that, that was a surprise. <laughs> but uh, they just no longer had the quality that of, of, their, of the historic as a historic resource. And so they were both taken off. Um, Then 800 Santa Barbara Street, which, <laughs> uh, which we reviewed, and um, the architect came 
he wasn't able to come to us with a revised project based on the, their comments, but he did have one yesterday for them. Uh, there were still a lot of concerns about the size, bulk, and scale, even though the fourth floor had been removed. And, um, and there were many remarks about making it look old, making it look like Santa Barbara. And that they, they, um, one commissioner said the architecture is not acceptable. Um, commissioner Mahan said it was an improvement, although he doesn't disagree with the other comments, but it's the acceptability of the architecture. Um, so uh, they will be, there was, they, they were very appreciative of the comments from the Planning Commission and felt that those were helpful. And they, um, and there was some considerable discussion about whether it could come back to us because they were interested possibly in it after the architect works on it some more uh, on having it come back to us for further review by us. The other item that uh, might be of interest to the commission that they reviewed is 35 State Street, and these are changes and loss of some of the landscaping at, on State Street at the railroad track. And it's all because of requirements from the railroad and from the CTC, which I guess is the California Transportation Commission. Their, their requirements about distances and how they, having to put in a divider in the median, um, which cannot be landscaped, but because some people tried to go around stopped cars and around the end of the gates that come down. So uh, they weren't very happy about that one, but they didn't have much choice on that one. So that, that concludes my report. Okay. Is my understanding from uh, the HLC meeting yesterday regarding the 800 Santa Barbara Street that it almost certainly will be coming back to us for another review because a lot of the HLC members and the uh, applicant both commented that they wanted us to review it again, even though the uh, even though the HLC members were happy with our previous review, and as was pointed out by staff, a subsequent review is not required. Uh, it seemed to be that a lot of the members discussing it wanted us to take another look at it. So. One way or another, we may end up with it again. Uh, Commissioner Schwartz. Uh, this month's Water Commission meeting would have taken place Monday of this week, but they canceled it, so I will give an update on uh, next month's Water Commission meeting. Thank you. Okay. I have a brief uh, report from the Single Family Design Board. Uh, they, once again, were looking at the 210 Miggs Road five-unit subdivision that we approved back in 2009 and uh, still struggling with some of the grading issues in proximity to the school there and so forth. But it will not come back to us, but they haven't yet worked out the details of uh, how the houses are going to look and so forth. Unless there's any other reports, the meeting will be adjourned.